Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday with the Friar. I'm Father Joe, the director of the Renewal Center in Scottsdale. I wanted to share with you some excerpts from a letter from Archbishop Gomez to the new president, Joseph Biden. This was uh, published January 20, 2021, and I believe the Conference of Bishops and the Archbishop here reflect well my own personal feelings about what's going on in our country. So I'll offer you these excerpts to think about. When we speak on issues in American public life, we try to guide consciences and we offer principles. These principles are rooted in the gospel and the social teachings of the church. For many years, the Conference of Bishops has tried to help Catholics and others of goodwill in their reflections on political issues through a publication called Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. Among the concerns are abortion, euthanasia, the death penalty, immigration, racism, poverty, care for the environment, criminal justice reform, economic development, and international peace. On these and other issues, our moral principles lead us to prudential judgments that do not align neatly with the political categories of left or right or the platforms of our two major political parties. On some issues, we find ourselves more on the side of Democrats, while on others, on the side of Republicans. In a time of growing and aggressive secularism in American culture, it will be refreshing to engage with a president who clearly understands in a deep and personal way the importance of religious faith and institutions. At the same time as pastors, the bishops are given the duty of proclaiming the gospel in all its truth and power. So I must point out that our new president has pledged to pursue certain policies that would advance moral evils and threaten human life and dignity, most seriously in the areas of abortion, and contraception, and marriage. Of deep concern is the liberty of the church and the freedom of believers to live according to their consciences. Our commitments on issues of human sexuality and the family, as with our commitments in every other area, such as abolishing the death penalty or seeking a health care system and economy that truly serves the human person, are guided by Christ's great commandment to love and stand in solidarity, especially the most vulnerable. The injustice of abortion remains the preeminent priority. Preeminent does not mean only. My hope is that we can begin a dialogue to address the complicated cultural and economic factors that are driving abortion and dividing families. The President's call for national healing and unity is welcome. It is urgently needed as we confront the trauma caused by the coronavirus pandemic. We know too that reconciliation requires patient listening to those who disagree with us. I entrust all our hopes and anxieties in this new moment to the tender heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patroness of this exceptional nation. May she guide us in the ways of peace and obtain for us wisdom and the grace of a true patriotism and love of our country.